Good morning, everybody. I hope your evening went well. It was actually a little cool here in Wichita, so we were surrounded by clouds and the promise of rain, but we just kind of got misted. So uh, the rain has gone west of us and north of us, and we can certainly use a boost from Mother Nature. Hard to believe it's the end of another month of trading, right? And we're looking at Labor Day, the official end of summer. Uh, this tends to um, create trading ranges. Uh, for all markets, uh, the people that don't have to be in the office or can get away early do. Uh, they head for the doors about 12 o'clock, which can exacerbate the volatility, make it swing all over the place into the close, but it usually doesn't. Usually afternoon, Eastern, things begin to quiet and quieten and, and uh, taper down. And I expect that will be the case today. Since Monday, we started this week saying that the E-mini would close over 2,000 come Friday afternoon. And we've been a buyer on weakness. Um, that hasn't hurt the financials. The financials have held their gains and uh, held up well during the um, this week's auction cycle. So we've had a good auction. Uh, today is settlement day. Anybody that wanted to buy two, five, and seven year paper in the cash markets will be sidelined today and the primary dealers will be balancing their books and positions. So that takes probably the two biggest components of the market out of the trading today and puts them on the sidelines without significant news. And we don't have significant news. Uh, overnight, um, the news out of uh, NATO, the news out of the EU about Russia's incursions in the Ukraine is not good. Uh, supposedly, they have a thousand Russian so soldiers actively fighting alongside whatever the Russian soldiers, uh, how many Russian soldiers are characterized as pro-Russian uh, Ukrainians. So Russia has uh, low cost, low budget, taken over Ukraine or is making life very, very difficult. Crimea has been annexed. They're working on the eastern Ukraine right now. The point of all this is, is to tell Ukraine you can't screw with us moving gas through your country um, or we're going to take your country away from you. Ukraine uh, is fighting back uh, as naturally you'd expect them to, but they can't fight too hard because they need Russian help with gas prices over winter and they need the revenue uh, that they get from letting that gas pass through their territory. So it's kind of an interesting situation. I imagine Russia ends up with what they want out of this, just as they've done in Moldavia, just as they've done in Georgia. And uh, if I were Russia, I'd make the message I would not want, uh, I mean, just completely inescapable that a, you will do as we say or we're going to take your country away from you. But not having to go so far as actually to occupy the Ukraine because they'd be taking over a hostile population. And that takes a lot of troops on the ground, and I don't think Russia wants to do that. So Russia continues, good guy, bad guy. Now we're not doing this. Yes, we are doing this. But yeah, you caught us doing this. We promise not to do it anymore unless we want to. Uh, game, and they play it very, very well. Uh, NATO's not, a, not in a position to respond. Uh, the United States uh, leadership on this has been uh, lead from behind in its um, purest example. Uh, they, they let the events dictate what they're going to do, then they react to it so they don't have an overlay. And that just creates uh, more confusion uh, amongst our allies and more opportunities for our enemies. So I don't expect that to change. So what do I see for the note today? <clears throat> uh, Japan's economic news was not good overnight. Germany's economic sentiment has fallen because of Russia's in invasion of the Ukraine and uh, Russian sanctions against the EU. Um, I see a little flight to quality supporting the market. I also see a pause day due to um, settlement. So we got personal income. Expected up three tenths. No one pays much attention to this number. Because our in economy is supposedly 70% based on consumer spending, personal spending is what the focus will be on the first news release. That's going to be the number one focus. And they like to see that greater than personal 
income because that signifies economic weakness for the financials. People are borrowing to spend. At some point, they can't do that anymore. And for the uh, e-mini, it signifies at least the consumer is spending and supporting the economy. Chicago PMI will be the second focused, 56.4, up from last month's number. And then Michigan sentiment at 80.5, up from last month's numbers, but both the Chicago PMI and Michigan sentiment were lower last month. So this will be one, two, three. They all come at different times. They all should bring the market in. Okay, I see really, really good support in this uh, 16 to 20 area. Overnight session low is 22 and a half, so we're going to make buy one, 23 to 19, and then 17 to 13 for buy two. On the uh, sell side, 27 to 31 may take a little time to get there. Uh, but that is current resistance. I don't see us breaking out. And then 3 to 7, unless we get some really, really big help from the news. On uh, or some big movement out of the E-mini. And I don't see either of those happening. Okay, once you've mastered our trading methodologies in the note, which does have the lowest tuition costs, uh, we recommend that you move over and take your skills to the bond where you can actually make some money. And most people's experience is when they, um, uh, with our trading methodologies and setup is, is that uh, their break even make a little bit of money in the note. Uh, when they first get going and they're trading live. And what will happen is is that you'll make money in the bond because it's twice as volatile. It'll put you into um, a nice uh, return for your efforts. <clears throat> okay, the, uh, the knob spread has come in a little bit tonight, but I, again, I see a pause day. Uh, we've got resistance basically uh, in the... Uh, 48 to 15 area, uh, so we're selling 7s to 11s, and then 15 to 19. On the uh, buy side, maybe a little bit lower here, 25 to 29 for buy one, and then buy two will make 17 to 21. Now, having said that, this 29, if we come down and we can't fill it, 29, we're going to have to pay up. Uh, and the tendency has been for the knob spread to sell overnight and then to strengthen during the day session. So if we see that happening again this morning, uh, then that's our indication that it's okay to pay up uh, for the bond. <laughs> What's the over under rate for the Chicago murder? I have no idea, but you know, back in the old days, and it could be uh, the policy that Chicago is following again today is as long as the uh, uh, shooting and murder and mayhem was confined to certain areas, uh, the rest of Chicago didn't get too upset about it. It was kind of expected. And uh, let's come back with a vengeance now. And nobody says anything. Where are the uh, marching and the protesting and the Department of Justice and FBI and all the uh, killing that goes on in Chicago? They're nowhere to be found. And you have to ask yourself why. And we go down to Ferguson, uh, Missouri, and, you know, uh, the world lands on Ferguson with both feet. I guess it's because the killings in Chicago are just commonplace, and it really isn't new news. Who knows? Uh, but it, it shows you the hypocrisy uh, how that's involved at many levels in politics today and in the mainstream media. 
Okay, this is gold. We got volume here uh, in the 83, 85 area, and we have volume in the 90, 92, and that's pretty much where we are, and that's where we left yesterday's uh, market. So uh, we've got this 83, 85 is buy one, perhaps a little lower than that. And then our 80 area, plus or minus for buy two. Uh, we've got this spill from 87. If we come up here and we can't get through this 87, 88 area, uh, then it is a sell. Uh, so we'll make um, 90 plus or minus for sell one. And then sell two will be our uh, 93, 95. Pretty much where we were yesterday on these. Uh, again, I, I think we're in a situation where you don't see you see, won't see people going home short from our day session. But if London holds, people will get short, and it's been a pattern that's been pretty consistent. I don't see that changing. Okay, Draghi. Uh, everybody that writes about what's going on in the EU says. Draghi has to start some form of quantizing. Uh, then you have the Ukraine mess hanging over the EU's head. Uh, we had a, the German finance minister came out and said, "Enough! You know, uh, we can no longer print and write money to support the rest of the EU." Uh, the German finance minister has said this before, only to be overruled by Merkel and her cabinet. So. Uh, I mean, everybody's aware of the problems. Everybody knows Keynesian economics doesn't work. Uh, but what does work about Keynesian economics is it gives politicians cover to borrow uh, and spend. And what else? I mean, that's just absolutely perfect for a politician. That's not going to change. So the economic uh, philosophy and theories are thoroughly discredited. They don't work. They've never worked. Uh, didn't work before World War II, didn't work after World War II, uh, but it allows for deficit spending. So what we have are governments that spend all they can during good times, don't pay anything yeah. back, and when bad times hit, they borrow to spend. And that's probably not going to change until they're no longer allowed by the markets to do that. Uh, and the first crack or chink in the dam or a crack in the armor we're going to see is that some central bank uh, quits playing the game. Right now, G20, they're all playing the same game. They're all borrowing to spend. Uh, they're all printing money, either directly or indirectly. Uh, and um, Argentina uh, is in default, officially, but they're blaming it on the people that sold them the bonds. So not our fault that you let us borrow this money from you. Uh, not our fault that we can't repay you. You shouldn't have lent the money to us in the first place. I've always loved that that reasoning. I wish I would have been, would have been able to use that in my life experience. Never worked for me. Uh, so here we are in uh, the euro. We got definitely have a seller into 25, and we've got a buyer uh, below 60, uh, pretty solid. So uh, right now uh, we're at 92. So we're going to sell 132 even, plus or minus. Don't see that anything has changed fundamentally. And then 1525 for sell two. On the uh, buy side, the last rotate down was 78. So we'll make 65, 75, buy one. And we're going to let the money market come to us. And then 50 plus or minus for buy two. Don't really expect a big market here. The um, worst thing going for the euro right now is the battling between Russia and the Ukraine. And uh, Russia wins when they want to. It's just they have to decide how quickly they want to push it and how far they want to take it, frankly. And my feeling is they probably don't want to take it much farther than they have to date. OK, crude oil um, says all is well. Crude production world. 
the Iraqi government. They're trying to reform one after Malaki. The first pass at it or attempt has failed. Uh, the Shias have killed 70 Sunnis at a mosque on last this past Friday, uh, which pretty much derailed the new formation of a new government. So we have all of these tribes, and then we have the Sunnis versus the Shias fighting it out for control of Iraq. And Iraq's been fought over for 7,000 years. Uh, and if you go look at the map, you can see why. So the only kind of stability they have in that area long term is allegiance to the tribe. And after World War II, when France and Britain cut things up, they did not take that into account anywhere in the Middle East. And there have been battles and fighting ever since then. We had 95, 95 and a quarter as a sell point overnight. We like this. Failure to get through 25 and then 50 to 75 for the next one. Um, if the supply of crude were truly threatened, we'd be much higher than we are now. So they're able to notch it up into the top of the trading range, maybe go a little bit higher, but not able to sustain it. But again, if we don't break it early in the session and the market starts to trade higher, I mean, my feeling is if you don't have uh, crude to deliver in, you will not go home short over a long weekend. Volume held in the 94.50 area, that's our attractor, so 94 and a quarter, 94.50 will be buy one. And then basically uh, 94 even, plus or minus, will be buy two. Bad news out of Ukraine supports uh, the market. Uh, bad news out of Iraq certainly supports the market. And last but not least, the uh, E-mini. Hey, we've, had, we've done really well this weekend uh, surmising which way the market was going to go and from which side to trade. Uh, at the start of the week, because a three-day holiday, uh, and we said money managers didn't have a lot of incentive to be sellers. Uh, they would protect their compensation as best they could without a major piece of news. And uh, the tendency is to close the market higher. Or on an up note, um, into a three-day weekend. So uh, since Monday, we've been saying we're going to close this baby above 2,000 come Friday. And so far, that, that scenario is still intact. So uh, we've got really, really good support. We've got the breakout from 97 yesterday. Uh, we have the bottom of value at 98, so we're going to play for a little weakness here on the opening. I don't know if we'll get it. We may have to pay 2000 to get in, so we're going to try to buy 96, 98s, but it may take 2000 to get off along. Let them go get stops just below 2000 uh, We do have some news that can help stir things up a little bit. Uh, we're going to make buy two. Our last rotate down yesterday stopped at 93, uh, then at 92. So this 92, 94 will be buy two. We're pr fairly aggressive on the buy side, but it, like I said, it may take 2,000 to get in. Uh, we can sell failure to take out 20350. I, I mean, it's a trade, but it's it's not what we really want to do. So I like the long side. And then selling the 2009-2011. Okay, personal income plus three. That's not the market's focus. Personal spending is. They like to see. It's called it plus two. They like to see that number greater than plus two. Chicago PMI uh, reflects automo automotive sector strength up from last month at 56.4. Could come in a little better than that. And then Michigan sentiment at 80.5 up from last month, but not we've seen bigger numbers. So focus number one, personal spending, second Chicago PMI, third Michigan sentiment, and then fourth the close greater than two thousand. Okay, it'll take fifteen minutes to get everything up and posted. Uh, I'm going to go busy on that. I'll be with you as soon as I can. 
I'll put the uh, note in the financials up first. Pay attention to that 2000 It may be the uh, what we have to pay to get in. I always like to buy it on the cheap, but sometimes not able to.